Greetings and welcome to the Gentleman Scholars Club. Today I wanted to share some thoughts I have on wearing pastel in menswear. So I'm talking about pinks, lilac, light yellow, light green, powder blue. Spring is on the horizon, mentally at least, at the time I'm filming this video. The shops are starting to put Easter stuff on the shelves, and so it's a perfect opportunity to discuss pastel colors, how to wear them specifically with tailoring in a classic menswear sense. I'll be giving five broad stroke tips on how to integrate pastels into your wardrobe. So if you don't have any yet, this will be a good starter. If you do already, I think I'll still be sharing some interesting and new concepts that you will still find useful. Stay tuned. So my first piece of advice on bringing pastel into your wardrobe is to start with shirts. This is because if you start with a pastel jacket, you're really going bold, you're sort of skipping to stage 10, whereas a shirt is covered by your tailoring, and if you're new to pastels, um, you're limiting the scope and appearance of that color to begin with. Now, if you're in the UK, uh, you probably have lilac and pink shirts in your rotation already. These are common colors in business settings in Great Britain, Whereas in North America, Canada, and the US, less likely to find these colors in men's rotations. This is owed in part to antiquated constructions of gender or concepts of gender, where pink and pastel colors in general are seen as soft and therefore somehow more feminine and inappropriate to menswear. 21st century, I would hope that we can discard these notions of color and gender being joined together there's no reason why you should hesitate. There should be no reluctance, no hesitation to integrate pastels into your wardrobe. Otherwise, you are sacrificing opportunities for creativity to inject some color and joy into what you wear. And we certainly need some happiness and joy in these days. Notwithstanding the fact that pink has also been a very masculine color for much of European history, only until roughly the mid 20th century, when pink was marketed as a feminine color with blue as its counterpart. But again, let's discard these past notions and admit all colors. Back to the topic of pink and blue, powder blue is probably the best entry or gateway color if you wanna do pastels and you're not yet accustomed to it. Powder blue or light blue is already a staple in business shirting and you may already own some pastels in your wardrobe and just have not thought about it as such. Blue in this shade also pairs really well with charcoals, with gray, with navy, so the classic suiting colors or the classic business colors, you can easily put them underneath. And then in terms of sh uh, sport coats or other menswear hues, uh, if you like to wear brown tailoring as I do, blue pairs superbly with that. And in the summer, or if you're going to a party or on the weekend, you can do cream jackets or white jackets with powder blue beneath. Really great range and versatility to wearing a powder blue shirt. Powder blue is also the easiest opportunity to try pastels as an outer layer of tailoring in the form of a sport coat because it pairs nicely with navy, with gray, with brown, with white trousers. And it's also less bright than some of the other pastels potentially like pink and yellow in the form of a larger garment that you're wearing on the outside. So give it a try uh, powder blue for a sport coat as well. A third piece of advice I have is when you first select a pastel colored shirt go with the lightest on the chart or the lightest one available rather than jumping to the middle. The reason is that light colors are more accommodating with everything else Brighter colors tend to be really bold, and so start at the soft side. Pastels, after all, are, by definition, supposed to be soft or chalky, and so they should be light and kind of gentle. Think about a swatch for paint, right? If you go to one of the large home improvement shops, home improvement stores, look at a paint swatch. It starts with the lightest tone of a certain color at the top, and then it has gradations down to the darkest. Imagine what you choose as being at the top or first two of the paint swatch. And if you're doing custom shirting or if you're simply looking online at shirt swatches, you can actually see these and choose them that way. Um, I like to buy Thomas Mason shirts from the Gaudery, uh, but I go to the WW Chan website, the Hong Kong tailor, 
and look at the Thomas Mason selection. They basically digitized all the Thomas Mason shirt fabrics and put them on their site. So I can search or filter by yellow shirt or green shirt, green solid, pink stripe, whatever, and then it will return uh, images of all the fabrics available in that color. And so I would pick out the lightest one, say the lightest pink, that's what I got here, and have that made for me by the Gaudry. Um, this is also important if you're doing a digital purchase because what you see on a screen is likely to be blasted out with light when it's photographed and when you get the actual product it will be considerably darker. So choose the lightest one and it's pretty safe in terms of what you get. Lighter color or lighter range of pastels also important if you're going to wear a tie with them. My personal preference is not to wear a tie, I like to wear the open collar, but if you want to wear a tie with a pastel lighter is better and then avoid wearing a dark tie with it. The biggest mistake that men tend to make is wearing a dark solid tie over a pastel shirt of another color. To me this makes you look like a teenager who's about to go to a school dance or a social or maybe entry-level sales associate somewhere. Want a more mature style, a more sophisticated style, avoid two solid colors, darker tie over a pastel shirt. If you're going to wear a tie with your pastel, I would recommend a mid-color, so a mid-range mid tone, I should say, and maybe something that has either multiple colors in it or has a pattern or both. Uh, this will soften the contrast between the two items. Um, but again, it's key to have that fairly light shirt to begin with in order to work with the tie over the top. Now, the fourth piece of advice or comment I want to make about pastel shirting is that they really work well with neutral tailoring or what I would even call dull tailoring. So this is a black and white herringbone that reads as a gray. It's from Spear McKay. It's a Harris Tweed, one of my favorites. And I find I like to wear it with colored shirts, pastel shirts like this pink or even a sort of light yellow, lemon yellow. And the reason is that the color pops nicely against the duller tailoring and at the same time the duller tailoring will help to tone down the color that you're wearing. So it creates a unified whole in what you have on. It creates a, a nice blend or amalgam of the neutral or the, the duller, calmer color and then the pop of color of your pastel. So wearing your pastel in that way is really an effective use of the colors with tailoring. And then finally, as I suggested earlier in the video, the best time to wear your pastel shirts and pastel colors in general would be in the spring and early summer. Perhaps it is influenced by Easter, but pastel colors are in abundance in spring. It's also the time when color in general is making a comeback or reappearance after the grays and dull hues of winter. And so it's a great opportunity for you also to reflect that seasonal, the seasonal goings on uh, by wearing pastel yourself. In the midsummer, the sun gets brighter. You can wear hotter, bolder colors. In the autumn, you may want to wear warmer, browns and autumnal colors in the winter, your charcoals and your duller colors. Spring is the best time, the greatest time to wear pastels into the early summer. So I hope you found that useful. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to us at the Gentleman Scholars Club for more discussion of classic menswear, concepts, ideas, brand reviews, and more. As always, thank you for your viewership.